Hey guys, it's Batman. Thanks for checking out the Nazan Chapter 13 video. I apologize for being really low energy this video, but please stick around until the second half of this video to see the acute variable slideshow that I put together that I think will be really useful for helping you to study and pass this exam. All right, this is, we're starting a new section today. So uh, it's the same structure as the last video. I'm going to go over the study guide, just read it out loud. And then the second section, I'll be going over, I'll be going over a slideshow that I made that'll uh, go over all the acute variables of the OPT model. So that you could skip around, skip to that next section. Uh, that's got most of the meat of this chapter. Maybe uh, going through the study guide will uh, give some context to the uh, acute variables. I mean, whatever, do whatever you want. Starting a new section, section five, exercise technique in training instruction. All right, chapter 13, integrated training model and the OPT model. Integrated training combines flexibility, cardiorespiratory, core balance, plyometric, SAQ and resistance training into one system. When an exercise program is progressive and systematic using progressive overload approach, the body becomes stronger by adapting to new demands on it. So a few explanations. SAQ is uh, speed, agility, quickness. Progressive overload means um, each time you're working out, you're just trying to do something a little bit more challenging than the last time. Maintaining an ideal posture places the client's body in the most optimal state to perform movement patterns safely and effectively. Optimal range of motion allows joints to move freely. Fitness professionals should provide programming that requires movements in all planes of motion, sagittal, frontal, and transverse. Sagittal movements would be uh, things you can do while you're in a uh, slim doorway. Frontal movements would be pretty much uh, abduction, adduction, moving away into the midline of the body. There's more movements um, like that that are um, in the frontal plane. Transverse is mostly like twisting and rotating. Um, the acute variables for training include repetition, sets, training, intensity, repetitions, tempo, rest interval, training volume, frequency, duration, exercise selection, and exercise order. Again, all variables you could manipulate around to make the never-changing integrated training approach provides a systematic and progressive approach to fitness training. Its components include flexibility, cardiorespiratory, core, balance, plyometric, reactive, speed, agility, quickness, and resistance training. Benefits of flexibility training include increased range of motion, possible decrease in muscle soreness, and potential reduction in injury risk. I think that's a good key point. I mean, next chapter, we're going over the entire flexibility chapter. Uh, benefits of cardiorespiratory training include decreased heart rate and blood pressure, while increasing stroke volume and cardiac output. Benefits of tra core training include enhanced posture, better bo bodily function for daily living, increased balance, stabilization, and coordination of the kinetic chain, minimized back pain, and improved skill-related movements. And that's the benefits of core training. Benefits of balance training include reducing risk of falls, ankle sprains, while improving proprioception and the ability to be um, and agility-based activities. Benefits of plyometric training include improved bone min mineral density and soft tissue strength, expression of power and explosiveness while also increasing metabolic expenditures required for weight management. For me uh, personally, uh, plyometric training is really rough on my joints. I don't recommend it unless you're kind of light, but uh, at heavy weight, it's uh, a good way to roll your ankle and um, just make your knees hurt bad. Uh, benefits of resistance training. Now this is the good stuff include decreased, or sorry, increased endurance, strength and power, muscular hypertrophy and weight management. The OPT model is based on the scientific rationale of the human movement science and uses principles of integrated training. The OPT model is divided into three different levels of training, stabilization, strength, power, which are um, subdivided into five phases. Phase one, stabilization endurance training is designed to teach optimal movement patterns, pushing, pulling, pressing, squatting, hip hinging, core and joint stability, and helps clients become familiar with various modes of exercise. The goal of phase two strength endurance training is to enhance stabilization and endurance while increasing prime mover strength. Phase three muscular development training is designed for individuals who have the goal of maximal muscle growth or alter body composition, i.e. fat loss. Phase four maximal strength training works towards the goal of maximal prime mover strength by lifting heavy loads. The goal of phase five training is to increase maximal strength and rate of force production. All right, so that is that. 
there's that. Honestly, I mean, I could be wrong. I haven't taken the test, but I believe this this slideshow is going to be a little bit more useful than the study guide. OPT model. So this is uh, how they visualize it. Kind of, um, I don't know, stupid to me, but whatever. So step one is, you know, stabilization. You know, you're working on your proprioception. Um, you're doing stuff on a ball and whatever. Uh, we'll get into more details of each one throughout the next slides. Um, key point is the macro cycle means annual plan. That'd be a good thing to flashcard. Uh, mesocycle, monthly, microcycle, weekly. So honestly, if you remember that the biggest metric they're using is a year and the smallest is a week, it's pretty easy to memorize micro, small, weekly, meso, kind of the middle, monthly, and then the biggest unit they're using is year, macro cycle. So, so, and here's just kind of a general summary of what stabilization is. Stabilization endurance is the foundation of the OTP model. During this first phase, clients will perform 12 to 20 repetitions per set. Their movement speeds will slow down in intensity. Weight used for exercise reduced to promote muscular endurance and ensure correct form. I think that really explains the general idea behind stabilization and I, I can get behind it 12 to 20 reps a lot. So just remember, kind of the higher you go during the OPT model, the less reps you're gonna be doing. So the foundation, you're mastering form, you're going slow, you're doing a lot of reps, but not much weight. So what's this? So here's another explanation of the tempo, in case I got it wrong in the last slide. Therefore, assuming the above, a four to one tempo on one repetition of bench press would be four counts controlled eccentric, decelerating, bringing the weight back down, so one, two, three, four. I think you'd hold right here for two seconds, two, and then push back up fast. And then one, two, three, four, one, two, one. What are the periodization phases? For this, I found a nice nifty article on NASM's blog that broke down all the acute variables of the OPT model. And that actually has some extra ones, so this might be include some more advanced variables that we don't even necessarily have to worry about for the CPT exam. Acute variable A, uh, low, moderate set volume, one to three sets. Moderate to high repetitions, 12 to 20. All right, so these are the acute variables. This is really what you gotta know for NASM. And this is, this is the most important stuff that you need to memorize for the exam. This is what makes each phase of the OPT model what it is. So these are the unique traits of each phase. These traits, acute variables, these characteristics of this, each phase, these are the things you've got to memorize for the exam. So um, from an article I found over on NASM's blog, um, they break down what each acute variable is in each, um, in each phase. So we're starting here with phase one, stabilization. This focuses on intrinsic core and prime movers to improve flexibility, stabilization, and to prepare the body for strength training. All right, first acute variable, low to moderate set volume, one to three sets moderate to high repetitions, 12 to 20, low to moderate training intensities, 50 to 70%, one RM, one rep max, slow tempo, four to one tempo, longer rest periods, zero to 90 seconds, low to moderate training frequency, two to four times per week, one to two stabilization progress progressions per muscle group. So important factors to memorize here, one to three sets, very low, well, pretty low moderate to high repetitions, 12 to 20 reps, that's a crap done. Pretty low intensity, four to one tempo, slow tempo. Longer rest periods, which zero to 90 seconds, that pretty, sounds pretty short to me, but zero to 90 seconds of rest on the, on the stabilization phase. So flashcard that, memorize that. Then we're going on to Phase two, strength endurance. Strength endurance improves muscular endurance to increase work capacity to support higher training intensities of subsequent phases. So uh, this will get you primed up and ready to do phase three, phase four, and phase five. What are the acute variables? What are the things you're gonna need to uh, know about this phase? Phase two, you'll need to know, these are low to moderate sets, or in volume, there's two to four sets, so you could technically have the same amount of sets as in phase one, but the range is two to four. Moderate to high reps, eight to 12. So that's a really nice comfy kind of rep range. Um, low to moderate training intensities, uh, 50 to 70, 
not super nice. So you can, t I mean, if you want to look at it, like strength endurance is a step up from stabilization. Stabilization is pretty crappy. Uh, strength and endurance is, you know, you're starting to get to some something that looks like a doable program that you'd want, you would consider doing. Superset, superset a strength focused exercise with a stability focused exercise. 202 tempo and a 421 tempo. Moderate rest period, zero to six C seconds, um, whatever. Low to moderate training frequencies, two to four times per week. Pretty, pretty crappy phase, but you know, it's all right. Uh, now we're into phase three, hypertrophy, muscular development. So um, I think their old edition, they called it a hyper, hypertrophy. Now they call it uh, muscular development, or maybe that's the other way around, but here we go. Maximize muscular development and growth to increase protein synthesis, improve strength and body composition. The acute variables for phase three, moderate to high set volume three to five sets that sounds legit moderate to, uh moderate repetition six to twelve legit moderate to high training intensity 75 to 85 percent of one rm sounds very good moderate tempo 202 moderate to moderate rest period zero to 60 seconds that's good moderate to high training frequencies three to six times per week two to four strength exercises per muscle group. So this is looking a lot better. We got um, that 202 tempo is gonna look like one, two, one, two. If you uh, give someone a program like this, um, they're not gonna go to the gym looking like an idiot. And again, all those acute variables, good thing to put them on a flashcard, um, associate all those variables, the three to five sets, the six to 12 repetitions, the 202 tempo with these three. Hypertrophy, oh yeah, and this, I don't know why I put this one here. Oh, because the last phase was hypertrophy, like how many years ago? Um, what is hypertrophy? Hypertrophy is an increase in muscle growth and growth of muscle cells. Hypertrophy refers to an increase in muscular size achieved through exercise. When you work out, if you want to tone and improve muscle definition, lifting weights is the most common way to increase much muscle hypertrophy. Essentially, it just sounds like it's muscle growth and that makes the cells grow. I'm like, okay, whatever. Phase four, maximal strength. XX tempo, um, as fast as you can. Three to five uh, minutes of rest, a lot of rest. 85 to 100% uh, intensity. That means you just go all out. Yeah, wait, why did I just go on four? Yeah, and then I guess I wanted to show off my own custom Canva art, um, but Nazan's blog uh, laid it out better. So you're doing one to five repetitions, you're doing four to six sets, you're doing moderate to high training intensities, um, explosive tempo, XXXX, uh, longer rest periods, three to five minutes, um, two to four times per week, and one to three strength exercises per muscle group. And now we're on the big daddy phase five, XXXXXX tempo three to five minutes of rest, three to six sets, 85 to 100% intensity. Um, so this is, you're pretty much, if you were making a program for a power lifter, this is what you'd give them. You'd give them a lot of rest, really, really heavy weight so they can move around, um, low repetitions, um, you know? And they say, I'm about fly, yeah, uh, nothing wrong with that. Just flashcard it, pause the screen, you know, make a flashcard, do what you gotta do. And this was the author of that blog that I got everything from. Andre Adams, thank you very much, I appreciate that. And then uh, this was the other article that I uh, used to make these slides, uh, Jack Jones. And uh, what we didn't cover from the OPT model was exercise selection, but boys, we got a lot of time, we'll get to that later. Thank you very much for watching. Um, check out my merch if you want to, if you don't, that's cool. And I gotta get to bed, bye-bye.